Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of the Anime Secrets JoJo's Podcast. I am joined today by my comrades Anthony Davis. Yo. Miguel Moreno. What it is, Chief. And the big man himself, Rizwan Merchant. What up, what up, fam? All right, cool, cool. So, wow, we had a really good episode. Uh, we finally got to meet the gang. The gang's, yeah. all, the gang's all here. The boys are back together. The Connor, before we begin really getting into it, I got to voice a problem real quick. A grievance, if you may. Absolutely. Okay. This podcast cannot continue because we are four. Uh oh. It's unlucky. I can't do this. I'm sorry. Uh oh. That's unfortunate. Well, I, mean, it, I mean, you could still do it if you count the bot as the fifth, unless you don't count hu- robots as people, Riz. Then that's kind of racist. Is it racist? Species, or. It's machinist. Well, it's robotics. It's robotics is what it is. Exactly. And we yeah. here at Anime Secrets do not believe in such discrimina- discriminatory terms. <laughs> I agree. Well, I'll just say it's a good thing Guido Mista isn't here with us, which is a shame because <laughs> Guido is actually, honestly, fast becoming one of my favorites. Him and Narancia, I just love their interaction. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I gotta say, I love Abaccio. Like, just... I don't know what calm, to think of Abaccio. You, know, you, you just don't even see him doing his... Or you see him doing his thing, but he's not drawing much attention to himself. And then he pulls off the old yellow snow trick, essentially. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the tea. He really brought the tea this time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it brings a new meaning to the term golden experience, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. But no, it was a great way to introduce the characters, and almost right away we see the stark contrast between this group and the Part 4 group. Oh, yeah. And the Part 3 group. Yeah, like, man, oh, man. These guys are ready. We're just willing to shank each other right then and there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're gangsters. It's all about what they're like. No, no, now, not oh. gangsters. Gang stars. Oh, gang stars. My bad. Now, when I first read, and I, and this is, of course, I've, I've read the manga already. When I first read the manga, I'm just kind of thinking to myself, like, okay, why is this guy, like, beating the crap out of this guy? Like, he's, he's like, like bipolar or something like that. And then. My surprise! Oh, he pulls a knife on. I'm like, what? Oh, okay. So the, well, they have they have that dynamic, okay? Which I was surprised by. Yeah, no. So it's nice. Uh, that they, they have some weird initiation, right? So that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, that doesn't really matter when you can turn your teeth into jellyfish. Yes. <laughs> okay, that was that was clever. I I was kind of thinking he would do something else where he would sape sift the liquid into something else, mm-hmm. but oh, I, I and, didn't expect and, oh, oh, and, and the liquid was piss. Just just, just to let yeah. y'all know, it was piss. Oh, I knew. Hey, cut it out. We literally saw him do it. I mean, oh yeah. Like, just nonchalantly in the background. He's like, eh, I'm gonna just pee out here. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be a dick to this person who I've met and I don't know anything about. He could be a cool person. He could be my best friend, but no. He could, he could kill me if we're doing this, but... <laughs> but it was also a good... Like, before we met the group, I like kind of the little introduction they did at the beginning explaining the hierarchy of a mafia. Like, they're like, here's the boss, he has his advisor, and then he has the capos, and then each one of the capos have, like, their group within them. And so, like, that was a nice introduction, and then those two uh, 
new guys. One of them, Zucchini, I think was his name, or something like that. Yeah. Just how he straight up zipped when he heard about the uh, money that they're going, they're trying to retreat. He's like saying, yeah, no, it could be worth five billion liar going on, and it's like Bruno knows where it's at. Turns around, just gone. Yeah, I'm excited to see everybody who's uh, who's gunning for this cash because it's it's definitely going to lead to a pretty interesting meeting of minds. Minds, oh, yeah. might, stands, all sorts of crazy shit. I uh, more Nazis. meeting of fight, more meeting of stands than of minds. I think. Yeah, some of these guys are pretty dumb. Mm-hmm. Like the guy who went backwards in his multiplication. Okay, so. I really love the way Homeboy was driving at the beginning of the episode. Mm-hmm. His, his style of driving gave me, like, flashbacks to a more crazy time in my own life. <laughs> oh, man. Give, give, give you flashbacks, like... Mm. During Riz's latest escapades from the frat parties that he attended and dominated in, Oh wow! Them good old college days. College days. <laughs> no, that uh, kind of that reminded me of a friend who, uh, not the best driver, sometimes who kind of pulled those moves. I'm like, nope, I'd be the other guy grabbing the steering wheel to put him back on the road. Yeah. I really like how we uh, we also. Uh, with the episode, I'm I'm glad that we got a little bit of both uh, our character interactions and all our character stuff that I like. And then we have a really good action sequence in the second half, a very cat and mouse, not even cat and mousey, just a very suspenseful fight. People just start going missing on the boat left and right. We're not even seeing what's attacking them until the very end. Like, mm-hmm. I uh, it's it's getting me excited uh, to see what happens and also i like how they're building everything up around abakio and it's like okay well the, seriously this guy's stand is is going to be some it's going to be serious bruno is letting us know that mm-hmm. but we gotta wait and see what'll happen when he uses it but, but guys you missed the most important thing Uh-oh, we didn't we hear missing? how you we didn't we didn't hear anybody getting horny on this, in this episode <laughs> We did not. We didn't hear anyone get what? Getting horny in this episode. Yeah, um, they, uh, they, they skipped the ending for this one. But I like that because they could shove a little bit more plot into it. Like, I'd rather them continually build up Abakio during that whole thing and how everyone's slowly disappearing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you can really tell they're, they're keeping... Then just, the like, shoehorning the, the uh, ending there just because after you, like, and it's the thing that JoJo's does so well. They, there are episodes where they will straight up just not play the opening or the mm-hmm. ending, just to like fit more story that they can into the episode. It's a good thing, though. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like I was watching the uh, dub episode of Diamond is Unbreakable, and I forgot <laughs> that they just completely ignored the intro and outro for that one to get as much of that in there as they could, and so. If they're willing to do that here, I'm all for it. Right. Because the, the way it ended just like perfectly, you see a Bakio stand just pop out, and it's like, oh, man, business is about to go down, baby. Yeah, props to David Pro for what they've been doing with writing and, and with mm-hmm. uh, painstakingly constructing the anime so <clears throat> that it works, and it works well as a show. Because sometimes you don't get that. And there was a little bit of a problem in part three with them, sort of. They didn't want to forget anything, so they put everything in, and some of the pacing could have been a little shorter. But, like, some of the episodes could have been single episodes, but I feel like they've learned their, le- their lesson. And since we know how many episodes we're getting, we know that they're going to be able to put everything into a span because they know what works. They know what they know wh- how they can condense the story, and at the same time, they know what parts to drag out and what parts they can just kind of leave as a neat little, like, okay, let's tie this up and finish it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's never, like, a spot where I feel like there's filler in this anime so far. 
in this season anyway. Yeah, there really isn't. I think a lot of it, a lot of what helps is uh, filler isn't much of a thing these days, I think, because the whole thing with filler is if filler was used at a time when they, when you would have a show coming out while it was being written. Yep. Like while the manga was being well, written. So you would get you would get points where, oh, we haven't published this next thing. We gotta wait a week or a month or two weeks or however long. And so they would come up with a lot of stuff. Luckily with JoJo's, with all of these parts, there's really only there's only one part that's up currently, and that is three parts of head of where we're at right now in the anime. So mm -hmm. filler, I don't think we'll have too much of a problem with it. We might get some original, like maybe like some original stuff, like like the the beginning of episode two with um the added scenes for um the scenic scenes for uh Giorno and, and his stepfather, and yeah. his mom. All of that was actually you could say that was filler somewhat, but even though it was in the story, but they just extended that. So it's mm -hmm. not like completely filler, it's just like some something added, you know, just yeah. for more, you know, more info. Well, I mean, okay, so we're saying that filler's not a problem for this, but part three had a bit of filler here and there. Actually, no. Actually, I read most of read most of the most of part three, and everything you've seen on that was actually in the story. Really? Yes. That's yeah. why. It, that's why it was two parts because there were a lot of there were a lot of uh, hey, I'm a stand user, I'm attack you, blah blah, and then it 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 rotated that way. A lot of stuff was extended, like two parts, but other than that, it was all like in the same in the story. Okay. I think the like, only only battle that was actually like extended was the paddle battle with the sun sand user, the one that was in the desert that like made all of them like dehydrate and stuff to it a uh, high degree. Yeah, that, I remember that one. That was only like maybe like what maybe like a. Not even that long. It was like maybe like five or six pages, and then they already beat him, you know, quickly. But here they they made it a whole episode about it. Mm hmm. But other than that, I can't think of any other time. No, it, and that's I think why they might have cut down the uh, number of episodes because they they realize they don't need a whole episode for certain fights. Like they can kind of split them up. Uh but. So far in this one, we are only like five episodes in. It's like each episode's built like it keeps building upon the last one and the last one. Yeah. So, you know, right now we don't have any anything that feels like it's gone on for too long, like we may have had in uh, Diamond is Unbreakable and Stardust Crusader. So this one still kind of young, but so far what we've had isn't doesn't feel like it's dragging. It's just like okay. We're getting to that more perfect level of show and tell uh, management, I guess you could say. Yeah. Mm hmm. Definitely. Another thing I kind of liked about this episode was, uh, you know, it may not be like a call out specifically, but it reminded me a lot of the godfather specifically part two where bruno's kind of walking down there and you see like all the people going like oh it's bruno hello bruno there's a scene in godfather two where there's a uh kind of higher up guy who a lot of the village pe people are going up to and it's like oh sir i need this favor or how are you doing here take this it's my treat for you like i like that it kind of mm. gives that sense of mafia going on because you can tell the people that uh, Bruno's beat is around they trust him like hey mm -hmm. this is a guy that gets done yep but the other thing in that sequence is you know when the older woman's like my son you know he's been acting rough it's like you know who's selling these drugs and then like you you see the hurt in Bruno because he's like he knows it's his group that's selling the drugs mm. and that yep. and that's causing them pain and so like Again, it's like a little bit more development for who well, I'm going to assume is going to be best boy, Bruno. Yeah. And all the Not more reason why he needs to team up with Giorno. Oh, yeah. Big facts. But not, but not just the people, but like the group he has himself. Like, mm -hmm. 
you know, when he's explaining to them about the treasure, they're like, not only are they excited, they're like, oh my God, we're going to make money. It's like, this guy knows what's up. This is why he's going to climb to the top. It's like, like you can tell this guy has a lot of admiration going for him. Oh yeah. yeah Bruno's really interesting that way. I really like Bukarati a lot for that. Like the part where he's talking to the old lady about her son beating him up, her up. That was really touchy. I liked it. Mm-hmm. It sucked that it happened for the lady, but it was good. It shows. It shows though that you have that human aspect of Bruno that you can't deny. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely shows that he's just not a cold mafioso type. Yep. Well, um, so I'm not sure what more we have to discuss. I feel like we might have uh, gone through it. What do you guys think? Uh, do we move on to closing thoughts? or? I think we've got a closing yeah. thoughts. And make this All a right, smaller so closing podcast. thoughts. Starting from the top, let's go with Anthony. I It was a little more, more like a uh, sore pace than what happened with last week's episode, but I still enjoyed it. Right, like, just... The fact that it took time to not only show us, like, hey, this is uh, Bruno's group, but we also get to see, like, you know, the surrounding, like, cities and just everything. Like, you know, it felt like like, like we're actually, like, deep in uh, Italy with how they just, there's just so much going on, you know, mm-hmm. especially with those two, um, two guys that wanted, the, you know, the money for themselves and stuff. Yeah. Well, I uh, I definitely agree. I would say um, I I really like the jump that we had from the slow paced character interaction stuff right into a really good fight. Uh, again, we've talked a lot about pacing this episode, and I think it's because this episode really kind of shows their talents at that. So I am pumped for this next fight. I have heard that part five is a little more like part three. Less uh, monster of the week type stuff, but definitely some high energy fights. So that's yeah. what I'm really into. I'm I'm waiting to see some real intense action sequences and some real nail biting encounters uh, for yeah. our crew here, our crew of gang stars. All right, Miguel. Uh, definitely another one of those episodes, much like episode uh, three, episode three, where it's just a build up episode where they kind of the base sub and you know the next episode is going to have the action you know kind of the more fighting the more animation where this one was just a lot of walking a lot of talking not too much action until the end but as Jojo has proven in the past once you get past those talking episodes and you get straight to the uh, punching episodes you know you're in for a treat so cannot wait to see moody jazz in action oh yeah alrighty Riz so I really liked the episode for the fact that it was slower than last week. Uh, we got a decent high-level understanding of the Gangstar crew. We don't know a lot about them yet. We don't know the, we don't even know what the stand abilities are of any of them, but we do have some personality to unpack. And I gotta say, the personality leaves itself wide open for a lot of interesting interactions in the future. And you know it's going to be a good time when Abe Zostar has that music playing in the background. He's about to go fight. Oh, yeah. So let's bring yeah. on the punchy punchy. Yep. It's muda, muda, be- muda, muda, muda. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, it's been an excellent episode. Uh, we will be seeing you next time. This is Anime Secrets signing out.